The school principal obeys all of my commands. Well, he can't say no to me. After all, I know his secret. I clutched my test with the big C- minus on it. As I opened the door to Principal Matthew's office, I felt my heart racing. This was my first time doing it since I found out the principal's big secret. I only told him yesterday, and though he unhappily agreed to my terms, I was nervous. I tried my best not to let it show when he looked up at me. Principal Matthews, I spoke. I need you to change this. I put the test on his desk. I need an A. For a second, I thought he would refuse, but with a sigh, he nodded. Okay, Penelope. I left the office and exhaled in relief. I couldn't help but smile. My plan was working. The next day, I wasn't worried about being late to school. I got sent straight to the principal's office, and I thought I'd ask him not to give me detention. Until I saw my crush Aaron with his blonde hair and impossibly green eyes. I was always looking for a chance to get closer to him, and this seemed like the perfect opportunity. After school, Aaron and I were the only two people who were sent to serve detention in the library, helping the elderly librarian sort out books. Aaron said, weird. I've never had detention here. I chuckled nervously. <laughs> oh, do you get detention regularly? With a smile, he nodded and said, do you want to kiss? I was shocked and I said, yeah, why not? We started kissing for a few minutes and then the elderly lady saw us and started yelling. I didn't even dream of my plan working so well. He asked for my number, but detention time came to an end and we both went our separate ways for the day. The cafeteria was always so loud at lunch. And yet the worst part of it wasn't the noise, it's the people. While my friends and I just tried to eat our food in peace, some of the popular kids chose us as our target for the day. Aw, Penny Poo, did no one tell you this look is like 10 years out of style? Angela said as she looked me up and down. That girl has been on my case since we were in middle school. I considered ignoring her the way I always did, but I remembered that I got the power I have now. From this day on, I wasn't the easy target I used to be. You know what, Angie Boo? I stood up and looked the mean girl straight in the eyes. Did no one tell you that your behavior is like an eternity out of style? I said, and then grabbed a handful of my french fries and threw them in her face. Food fight! Someone yelled, and the air was immediately filled with food getting thrown in every direction. I can't say I didn't enjoy it. Throwing every piece of food in my reach towards Angela and her gang was as fun as I imagined it being. Enough! Principal Matthew shouted at everyone, and everyone had to quiet down and watch him walk across the food on the ground. Everyone except me looked terrified. The principal looked around with a stern expression. His only question was, who started this? Angela said, it was Pen- But I interrupted her. Angela, Principal Matthew, sir. She was the one who started it. The principal looked at me and then turned to Angela and said to her, detention until the end of the school year, and I want to see your parents tomorrow. He turned around and walked away without listening to her protests. I bit my lip to hide a smile and just shrugged when Angela gave me an angry look. Math class was always a living hell for everyone who had Mr. Charleston as their teacher. That day he was mumbling his explanation of the new theme, and since he was doing a horrible job, everyone had trouble concentrating. Am I boring you? He yelled suddenly, addressing everyone in the room but looking straight at my best friend Gia. No sir, she said quietly. But he kept on yelling, displeased with our lack of attention. Engine. Can we get back to the lesson? Someone asked, tired of the teacher's irrelevant lectures. But that just made the teacher angrier. He was always like this, Mr. Buttface, with his bad explanations and even worse temper. I could see that Gia was almost crying. I knew I had to do something about it. When the girls went the other way to history class, I turned to the principal's office instead. Once I was there, I asked him to give us another math teacher. I could see that he wasn't too happy about being a 17-year-old puppet, but it's not like he had a choice considering what I knew. While going to class, I noticed a weird situation in the parking lot. Two seniors picking on a small freshman. The girl was distressed while the jerks were laughing at her. Usually, no one would try to mess with seniors. They were invincible to every grade below. But now that I felt more powerful, I had the bravery to stand up to them. Let her go, I yelled. And while the guys were distracted with surprise, the girl had the chance to run. They were mad at me for ending their fun. But unlike that young girl, 
I knew these guys and I wrote down their names. Going straight to the principal's office was the first thing I did the next day. At this point, I knew that I could use my power for good. I could make the school a better, safer place. And that required jerks like them to be out. I can't kick them out, the principal protested. Then how about expelled? I could see the defeat in the set of his shoulders. Expelled? Yeah, I can do that. They'll be expelled. Another win for a mighty penny. Aaron and I kept texting each other, though we still haven't had a chance to hang out. He was so busy studying after class. And now, that terrible math teacher was teaching his class. I didn't really solve the problem. I just made it their problem instead of mine. He needed to be fired. Maybe then Aaron would have more time for me. That required another trip to the principal's office. This time, it took way longer. He was set on keeping Mr. Buttface at the school, but I was more stubborn and with a clear advantage on my case. I wasn't going to lay this to rest. I knew the power I had over him was serious, and no matter how much he argued with me, at the end of the day, he would have to do as I say unless he wanted to end up behind bars. After a while, he gave in. With how devastated he looked, I thought he would either smash something or cry. And actually, while I'm here, I started biting my lip. Principal Matthew sighed and took off his glasses. Yes, Penny. He was obviously not looking forward to my next request. Ask the teachers to go easy on Aaron, the blonde junior, he spends way too much time studying. He deserves all B's and A's. A few days later, Aaron, now less stressed and busy, asked me out. I was feeling drunk with power. Because of me, the students of this school won't have to deal with a terrible teacher. And as a reward, I'd get to date the guy of my dreams. When later that day, Gia said that she got us tickets to see our favorite band live, I felt like I was over the moon. That is, until our parents said they wouldn't let us go to a concert on a school night. Don't worry, I quickly said, looking at the three moms with the most innocent eyes. There are no classes the next day. I'll get Principal Matthews to call you and confirm, I said with a charming smile. Penny, what are you doing? Callie whisper screamed once we were in her room. Don't worry, Cal, I've got this covered. And I, or rather Principal Matthews, didn't disappoint. We got to go to the concert and have a day off in the middle of the school week. With everything going so well, I didn't have time to feel bad for what I was doing. The next day back, we had a prom planning meeting. Everyone wanted a big, glorious prom, which wasn't possible with our budget. This was another opportunity for Mighty Me to do some good. We all deserved a perfect night of fun at the end of the school year. After saying I was going to the bathroom, I went to find the principal. As I approached him with a vicious smile, I could see that he knew that I was about to ask for something. We're having a prom budgeting meeting, principal, and... And you need more money. See, I knew you would understand. Five minutes after I returned, Principal Matthews walked in and announced the new budget. Now we had the money for the prom we wanted. I would get my perfect romantic fairy tale night. Too bad I can't go, Aaron said with a smile after I told him all about the next day. What? Big football game the next day. The coach is making us miss prom. I didn't plan for that. Still, I managed to solve the issue by convincing the principal to reschedule the match for a week later. Now, all the football players could attend prom. In the next couple of weeks, I tried to use my powers in a wise, just way. Every bad teacher got fired. My friends had better grades. The mean girls and guys got bad grades in detention. I slowly made the school a better place. A fair place. The second librarian, who was always mean to the students and wouldn't let us talk in the library, got replaced with a new, nicer librarian. The guy who played all lead roles in the school plays and was always mean to everyone, not in the drama class, started getting bad grades and had to leave the drama club himself. With only a month left until prom, that perfect paradise cracked. I stared at the anonymous message on my my screen. I know about the principal's secret too. I'm in and I plan to play big, it read. Going to school the next day, I was extremely nervous. The principal seemed mad over having to deal with me. Now that there's a second blackmailer, things could go south fast. I decided to try to keep my request to a minimum for the time being until I understood what the other blackmailer has planned. My plan failed after two periods, when I saw the principal's secretary yelling at some poor guy. That woman was way out of line. The school would be a much better place without her. The principal, however, didn't seem to think so when I came to him asking to fire her. How dare you, he yelled. Dora has been working for me for years. I won't fire her. I snapped. Don't fire her. Wait until your secret gets out and then she'll get fired anyway when you will go to jail. Is that what you want, Principal Matthews? Is it? He cleared his 
throat and looked down. Don't test me, sir, I added. Fine, he agreed. I'll, I'll do it. She'll be gone by tomorrow. The other blackmailer started acting that same day. As per his requests, the rest of the school day for that year are cut in half, and the principal invites one of the coolest bands in our town to play at our prom. A part of me was excited, while the other half was getting more nervous each day. The other blackmailer's requests were big. They were not playing it safe. I kept my requests to a minimum, still trying to serve some justice in this crazy school. And when my friends were about to be unfairly, in my opinion, sent to detention for skipping a class, I had to interfere. I followed the principal down the hall and I tried to talk to him. Penelope, stay out of this, he said in a tense voice. Gia is getting her well-deserved attention and there is nothing you can do about it. But sir, he said, no. Won't let her get away. This is a school, not a circus. I said, you'll regret it. He seemed exasperated at my words, but walked away without giving him a chance to reply. I was working out a plan to remind him of his place on my way back from school. When I looked up, I saw Aaron kissing another girl. Needless to say, by the time I was home, I was overwhelmed with frustration, sadness, and desperation. The combination of the principal's little rebellion and Aaron's betrayal shook me to the core. I acted on a whim without thinking through things. I took my laptop, made an anonymous account, and started posting clues to the principal's secret in my school's web group. If he wanted to act all tough, I was going to show him that I was tougher. Soon enough, he called. His pitiful voice calmed me, giving back my sense of power. He was willing to do anything to get me to erase those posts. He sounded like he was crying. A part of me realized that I should have felt bad for him, but instead, that made me feel so much better. Remember Aaron? I asked. I grinned and looked at my reflection in the mirror. I think he needs a change in schedule. Make it more like mine. No problem, he replied right away. I will do it. I will do anything. I pretended to hesitate for a while longer, just to enjoy the sound of our big, scary principal. Or so I once thought, whining and begging. After the call, I deleted all the posts. I could use having the principal on my side for a while longer. The next week showed me I made the best possible decision. Aaron was now spending most of his school days with me, and we were close again. The principal was doing everything I wanted, and the other blackmailer wasn't half as bad as I expected. They made the principal put fast food in the cafeteria, and I continued to use my power to punish the bad seeds. I felt victorious knowing that most bullies at the school either have detention or are indefinitely expelled. All those years I spent being bullied by queen bees and jocks didn't seem so bad now that karma would find its way to make things fair. And I can't lie, I loved feeling like the acting hands of fate. With one day left before prom, I got a new message from the other blackmailer. They were planning to take the principal down at prom, reveal his secret, and give him over to the police. And somehow, that person knew who our next principal would be, and how to make that person work for us as well. We spent hours chatting and discussing our plan. The prom went perfectly, and the thought of what would happen at the end made it even better for me. Though Aaron and I didn't go together, and quite frankly, I was a little bitter about that, we danced together for a while. I had a lot of fun with my friends, and the band was great. When the fun started to die down, the presentation the other blackmailer and I made the day prior was planned. I was looking at the principal, enjoying his devastation as he watched the school find out about his gambling problem. Now everyone knew that he gambled away the school's valuable art collection and a portion of the school's fund. By the end of the presentation, he was being handcuffed by the police that I called in advance. But the police also handcuffed Aaron as it turned out he is the other blackmailer. I looked around nervously, half expecting to be the next one escorted out, yet nothing happened. It was just the two of them. I got away with it. And even more than that, the other blackmailer, Aaron, had found out the principal's secret and emailed it to me this morning. I didn't just get away with it. I had the chance to make my senior year perfect. The future looked bright as I watched the two of them get into cop cars, knowing that I had nothing but victory ahead.